We're in Calabria, in the Gulf of Squillance, in the middle of summer. The sun is shining, clear waters, a delight. Have you ever thought of buying or renting a boat or an inflatable raft? Where to begin? If the engine has an output power equal or less than 40 horsepower, the license is not needed under Italian law. But remember that the nautical license course teaches how to sail in a safe and pleasurable way, and everybody should do it once. As far as the hull is concerned, what does a beginner have to know? Let's see, for instance, this rubber boat, the Cayman 18 Sport, built by Ranieri International. Its dimensions and weight allow the installation of a modest output engine. Shortly, we'll try it out and we'll see what its performances are. But now let's break it down in detail. An inflatable boat of 18 feet, which is about 5.5 meters, is a good start. You can find enough space to relax, even with four people. It's actually perfect for a family with two kids. We know what every bit of extra length of the hull improves the sailing comfort, but this measure is already enough to enjoy the sea, mostly if the weather condition is, like today, favorable. Compared to a rigid hull craft, an inflatable boat generally has better stability, since the tubes are big and immersed. The end of the tubes, as well as the fenders, are dark in colour, since these are the areas where keys and piers bump up against it. So this detail is welcome, in order to hide the marks. On the other hand, I would have liked the handles to be of a light colour, because they really get hot under the sun. I find the handrails near the sofa on the aft combings very useful, and I like the shape of the windshield, with these cutouts on the plexiglass to better grip the railings. The scuppers just under the deck are large in diameter and perfect. Not all the inflatable rafts of this size have two sunbathing areas. The one on the bow is decidedly comfortable, and the stern one can be set up by reclining the backrest. Do you want to know what is the most useful area on a craft of this size? The stern. The rear platforms are flat, wide and non-slip, and the telescopic ladder has its own recess. The lockers are independent. What does that mean? It means that they are isolated from the bottom, clean and dry, since they are physically separated from the hull. Talking of the building techniques, Ranieri International pays a great deal of attention to the structure of the deck and hull, with different solutions for each area. Such a way to optimize quality and strength. And now, finally, let's try it out. The console is well organized. The steering wheel is shifted on the left side to leave space to some beautiful company on your right side if you like to. If, unfortunately, you're sailing alone, you can take the center, grip the wheel with your left hand and the telegraph with your right. The control board is built into the console. This way, it takes out less space. It's unlikely to bump it accidentally, and this improves the safety on board. Lo stacco va sempre allacciato, subito, appena si parte. È importantissimo perché se perdete... The emergency engine cutoff has to be always installed as soon as you're ready to go. It's very important because if you're losing control, if you're not here at the command, maybe you've fallen overboard. This way the engine stops instantly. Otherwise, if the boat keeps sailing without a pilot, it becomes very dangerous. I don't want to spoil the pleasure of this test, of this boat trip. But let me insist, always secure it. Okay, let's start sailing. First thing to do, check that the trim is on its lowest setting, that the propeller is closest to the transom. This way it's easier to bring it to ascent. We're not lacking power, we're planing at a rather low speed, just 10 knots. Once the raft starts planing with the right trim, the RPM increases automatically. It's a pleasure to hear the engine roar, growing louder, and feel the speed increase. We're sailing at 15 knots and the engine is at 4,000 RPM. There's a light breeze here in the Gulf of Squillance, raising a short wave and it's not at all bothersome. 
With this type of sea condition, boats travel even faster. Yes, because it's like the hull becomes more easily detached from the water, so it has less resistance. Bit by bit, as it accelerates, I also increase the trim slightly, but really just slightly, because the boat will find the correct inclination to the water on its own. Here, we're at 4,800 RPM. Keep in mind that for most outboard engines, this is the maximum cruising speed. That is, you can keep this speed as long as you want without worrying that it will overheat. And moreover, up to this limit, usually they will achieve the best performance intended as both consumption and speed. Now, if you want, you can optimize the performance by a fine trim tuning. It's enough to just touch the switch, listen to the engine, look at the RPM meter and the speedometer, and understand which setup is best. The speed increases without touching the telegraph. That means with no additional consumption. One of the qualities of a small craft is its agility. Check out how this Cayman 18 maneuvers. Can you see how small is the turning radius? Meanwhile, I change my course. Now the waves are following us and we can find the maximum speed. Un occhio al contagiri, un occhio davanti alla prua, un altro, beh, io ne ho quattro. One eye on the RPM meter, one eye on the horizon. Another one, well, I have four of them. On this watch, that is saying that we're sailing at 27 knots. Now I want to try if by increasing the trim, I can increase the RPM. I did it. Can you hear that? We're at 6,000 RPM and the speed is now 29 knots. With a trim this high, you must keep the course as soon as you start banking the propeller cavitates. As I always say, you don't need a big boat to enjoy the sea. And this Cayman 18, built by Ranieri International, is the living proof of it.